chapter 250 of Jujutsu Kaisen has genuinely got Sukuna fighting for his life. Right, that's the breakdown done, I guess. See you next time. Now, for real though, Sukuna Glazers have already lost. Like, no matter how you look at it now, the king's been cooked. Like, that's it. Even if he whips out the anti-cooking technique from the Heian era next chapter and mercs them both, it's just too late. Respect simply gets put on either Gojo's or Yuta and Yuji's name either way you look at it. So you damn main character f***ing Sukuna glazing kinds of- Oh, just go f***! Okay, not gonna lie, I don't think Jujutsu Kaisen has been very healthy for me. Oh well, enough waffle. Let's just break down this incredible chapter. Luckily for us, this chapter gets straight to the point by explaining the rules of Yuta's domain, all-encompassing and unequivocal love. Low-key a shit name, but probably sounds better in Japanese, and at least it's on theme for Yuta's character. Basically, Yuta can assign one copy technique as the guaranteed hit for his domain. Just, like, deep that for a second, yeah? That would make it broken enough, but Yuta being Yuta, he obviously has even more to offer. Each katana represents a copy technique he can manually attack with. Only Yuta can use the katanas, and even he doesn't know what each katana's technique is until he actually grabs it. The only other character that we've seen so far capable of altering the guaranteed hit of a domain is Kenjaku, the second best barrier user in history. I mean, given what happens at the end of this chapter, Yuta can basically copy Malevolent Shrine just without the barrierless bit of the domain. I mean, I get the barrierless thing is what makes Malevolent Shrine so broken, but still, I'm actually just gonna have to make a whole separate video about how broken this domain is because it'll be so fun to talk about all the combinations of techniques that he can use in this domain. Yuta uses Drop's Shikigami domain, leaving gashes on Sukuna's back. Sukuna then reflects on how much Gojo actually fucked him up, and then Sukuna himself confirms that healing into Heian Era form did not recover his output or his domain. It was purely a physical healing transformation. Yuta actually agrees that pre-Gojo Sukuna would shred all of them in an instant, but can't right now due to his low output. And I agree, I think full output Sukuna would just shred them with a cleave. Like, realistically, what are any of them gonna do about it? But let's recap real quick. Sukuna nerds originally claimed that Heian Era Sukuna was peak, Full output and full strength, meaning Gojo achieved exactly nothing in his fight. Sukuna nerds are now going to switch up and claim that he only got slapped up by Yuta and Yuji because he's still weak from his fight with Gojo, which is true, but can you make up your mind? At least this means that Gojo should get the credit he deserves for being the only reason that Sukuna is beatable right now. Interestingly, Sukuna compares his current total cursed energy to the cursed brat. This could mean Yuji's cursed energy has increased massively over the last few months. In fact, this statement is one of the three things in this chapter that suggests Yuji and Yuta are actually on a similar level of cursed energy at the moment. But knowing Sukuna, he wouldn't compare himself to a no-name like Yuta as opposed to the brat who he despises. Sukuna is currently using his extra arms and mouth to maintain Hollow Wicker Basket, something which is vital for his survival inside this domain, and that means that he can't use his extra features to boost his output any further. Even Sukuna says that if the trio chip away at him enough for Hollow Wicker Basket to fail, then Jacob's Ladder will just completely eradicate him. Like, that's it. Game over. Sukuna also surmises that Yuji can strike the barrier dividing Sukuna and Megami's soul, and each soul strike actually lowers Sukuna's output even further. And I feel like I'm gonna say soul too much in this video. But that is an OP ass anti Sukuna technique right there. Like he can just directly strike his soul and then lower his output just from doing damage to his soul. Given his increased cursed energy, soul strikes, incredible strength, and the potential for soul swapping, I think Yuji definitely deserves the title of special grade status. The point is, Sukuna is genuinely fighting for his life right now. One wrong move will just lead to his death. This is maybe the tightest position he's ever been put in. So how is Sukuna going to get out of this? Because the story is not over yet, and he inevitably will. Well, I think I have actually already answered this in my previous video about Sukuna. This may be the most Sukuna has ever been pushed in a single day, and his output needs a quick recovery. So the only way I see him getting out of this is through a black flash. Possibly his first ever. It would ramp up his output and deal so much damage that Yuta's domain would inevitably fail. Anyway, that's just my prediction. I think it makes sense, but if you're still confused, I'll link the video in the description below because I need to get back to looking at this f***ing amazing chapter. As Sukuna analyzes his opponent's abilities and the risk that they pose, Yuta and Yuji start laying into him, and hard. Rika chucks Yuji like she's a female titan throwing an Ackerman, and Yuta attacks in unison. Sukuna then blocks both attacks and close range dismantles Yuji's stomach again, but honestly Yuji just don't give a fuck. Yuta then combines cursed speech with a thin icebreaker attack to send Sukuna flying towards Rika's attack. Hey yo, what the fuck is going on with Rika's hands man, when did they get like that? For some reason Sukuna gets all zesty on them and then flicks a dismantle net at Yuji and Yuta. The duo takes similar levels of damage, which is another reason that I think Yuji is matching Yuta's cursed energy levels. Sukuna then grabs and attempts to fatally cleave Rika, but his output is not high enough to do any more than slice up her hand. An impressive feat nonetheless, but not quite enough. Sukuna compares his opponent's toughness to Ryo Ishigori, and confirms that he needs to make contact for a cleave to actually prove fatal. Full output Sukuna chopped up Ryo no problem, a sorcerer Sukuna claims is similar to Yuta and Yuji in toughness. So again, Yuta and Yuji are being compared together, implying that they're at similar cursed energy levels. Sukuna then takes a second, to appreciate Yuji's progress and Yuta's very sophisticated barrier technique before mockingly asking what they were up to in the last month. 
Yuji being Yuji claims hard work, but Yuta gives a more pessimistic yet potentially honest answer, saying that they actually cheated. And I have two ideas for what this could actually mean. My first idea actually involves Yuji soul swapping to learn techniques or abilities like reverse curse technique. It would explain the strange panel we got between him and Kusakabe where we thought they had swapped souls. And it's also likely that Yuji was learning simple domain from Kusakabe if that was the case. It also makes sense because he's related to Kenjaku. Kenjaku had an ability where he could take over another sorcerer's body and then continue on with all their techniques. Of course, this is just a theory, but it does make sense. In fact, the only hole is why Yuji would need Kamo to teach him blood manipulation if he could just swap and get it. Okay, that actually is a pretty significant hole. The other idea involves a barrier technique which slows time, allowing them to have more than a month's worth of training. Earlier on in the Culling games, there was a sumo guy whose name I can't really remember who had a barrier that could slow time. And I think Yuta could have copied or learned this ability. This would actually explain why all of our protagonist defenses have improved, not just Yuji's, because they all would have had more time to train. Again, it's just an idea. Yuta then uses Charles's clairvoyance technique to see into the future, an ability that we didn't know he had actually copied. I'm not sure what the ink is already dry means, or why the panel shows is Charles himself looking at a screen wondering what's happening in the domain, but I think the important part of this is that Yuta is just using clairvoyance, something that Jujutsu genius Sukuna clocks onto very easily. Sukuna gives us a summary of all the techniques Yuta has used and wonders how many more he has hidden up his sleeve. He also contemplates if he could have Limitless and concludes Yuta can't control it without the six eyes and therefore can't have copied Limitless. Now the reason that this topic is brought up could be for one of two reasons in my opinion. One, to confirm that Yuta can't use Limitless, and two, to confirm that Yuta is about to whip out a f***ing hollow purple. Yuta then grabs a katana he's been searching for for a while and unleashes a technique that should terrify Sukuna. Cleave. Yeah, he threw his own technique back at him. It's been theorized before, but I never expected Yuta to actually copy Sukuna's technique. Also, Sukuna's surprise here is just so satisfying. Now, even with Sukuna's low output, I'd be surprised if Yuta can scale Cleave's output anywhere near as high as Sukuna's defenses. I think what's more likely to happen in the next chapter is it's going to show Sukuna erupt with slashes, mirroring when Sukuna did the same to Gojo in their fight. But goddamn, was that a way to end the chapter. I have no doubt everything's going to go tits up very soon, don't worry. I actually wanted to discuss how exactly Yuta copied Cleave since his conditions are still unconfirmed. I still like the idea of him simply needing to understand the ability, but for the sake of this theory, I'm actually going to assume that Rika needs to munch on some DNA. Remember, Sukuna's hand was lying around, so Rika could have just munched on that shit before they started fighting, but I think that's a bit of a cop-out answer, and I honestly find it quite boring. I personally love the idea that the end credit scene of Jujutsu Kaisen Volume 0 was Gojo going to give Yuta Sukuna's 20th finger in order for him to feed it to Rika. I agree with Sukuna's theory that Gojo would keep one finger hidden to himself in order to save Yuji from execution, and who better to entrust it to than his golden child Yuta Akotsu. Not only would Rika's strength increase, but he would also be able to copy Sukuna's curse technique. And don't forget that curse spirits can't be vessels, so Sukuna would get absolutely no control over Rika. It's just something fun to think about, you know? Hopefully I'm not late posting this again, and I really hope you enjoyed. As always, leave a comment with any of your theories, and don't forget to like and subscribe, or I will hollow purple your f***ing cat. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the Kill Count Part 2.